Welcome to HackYeah.com. My name is Trenton, and today we're going to be looking at creating a simple honeypot using PHP. Honeypots are an excellent tool to improve security. There's a flow chart that's been going on for quite a while, and I don't know where it came from originally, but it lists five elements of managing security. The first says that you need to be able to harden your security as much as possible. Then you need to be able to prepare for any attacks. If those attacks come, you need to be able to detect them. If you can detect them, then you need to be able to respond to them appropriately. And then last, you need to take all of that information and then use it to begin again with hardening your system and, and going through the whole five steps once more. Um, so the nice thing about honeypots is they actually touch on all five of these areas. And uh, so it's an easy way to help increase your security or add an extra layer to the security that you already have. Um, so before I get into the code, Let's go ahead and look at how this honeypot works and how it may bait an attacker. So here I've added a, um, a very secure site on my local host just as a demo. Uh, one of the things that you'll find on websites, and it's actually kind of fun to go and just look at look at familiar websites, Google or CNET or any of those websites um, out there, and then add the word robots.txt to the end of it. And oftentimes you'll get a file that will look something like this. It's going to say that we want to disallow any web spiders or search engines from finding anything in the temp folder or backdoor.php um, here. I mean, and these could be any files that, that the um, host or the web, web admins didn't want the browsers to, or the spiders to find. Um, but as an attacker, one of the things that they will do is look through these robots.txt files on various sites to pull out potential useful information. If they don't want it on Google, then maybe it's something worth knowing as an attacker. So, this backdoor.php looks pretty interesting, and I think I'm going to check this out. If they don't want anybody on Google to see it, with a name like backdoor.php, it must be something valuable. So let's go and check it out. And 404 not found. Are we sure? Yep, not there. But, let's take another look at this. We're going to go ahead and cat a file that's in my web directory. And as you can see, it logged my IP address, my host name, and then it put a timestamp um, on the file. So let's look at the code and see how this actually works and how you can create one for yourself. So the first thing that you notice probably though is that there's a 404 file not found. Um, what I did is I actually went to my web server and then just copied the source for a file that was obviously not there. I just typed in a random file name and then copied that uh, pervatum into this backdoor.php. And this is one of those things that I actually got this idea from um, malware creators. What they'll often do is create a not found um, appearance for their page so that if you actually end up on a page that attempts to exploit you, you think, oh, it's not there, no big deal, and you lower your guard when in reality there's malicious code running in the background. Um, so that's how it appears to not be found when really it's actually running a server-side script. So let's take a look at the PHP script really quick. And so the first thing that we ask the script to do or ask the host to do is attempt to get an environmental variable, get env, and it's going to try to get the HTTPX forwarded for. Oftentimes on caching proxies, um, it will appear that the address is coming from the proxy itself. Um, but that became an issue when all of a sudden the proxy servers became a way to make your connections anonymous. So they added the HTTPX forwarded for, and basically that says that if you're running through my caching proxy, um, it's going to come, the remote address is going to appear to be my, my address, but the actual address is that which is, is found in this this variable or in this HTTPX forwarded for. Um, so we're going to attempt to get that and we're going to set that to our IP. So if we get that, we're going to go ahead and move on. However, if we don't, we're going to try to get the IP by just using the normal remote address. So if they're not going through a caching proxy, this is where we'll probably find the address stored. So next we say if we have an IP, so if one of these works, which it's likely to work, if we have an IP, Let's go ahead and open up a file, honeylog.txt, and we're going to open it in append mode so that whatever we write will be added to the end of the file. Um, and then 
if we get that, so if it opened correctly, and it likely will because it's on your server, but it's always good to check. If we have a file handle, then let's go ahead and create a string. We're going to say output equals the IP address, and then dash dash, and then get host by address of the IP. This is going to attempt to look up the host name, and then another dash dash, and then a date stamp. This just simply asks for the the full year, and then the month, and then the day, then the 24 hour time, then the minutes, and then seconds in the timestamp, and you can rearrange that however you, you want. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and write the output to our file handle, and then we're going to close it. So that's really all there is to it. Um, a few notes though that are worth um, mentioning is if you're going to put this online, first you want to make sure that the log file has permission set so that the server can write to it, but no one can view it from, from the web without being authenticated first. Um, it would be a bad thing to have a log of everybody who's visited your site available to the public. Another thing, I, I saved it to a .txt file um, intentionally. Oftentimes you'll see requests like this being put into a database or into some other type of um, maybe an HTML page. One of the things that you have to be really careful with, with the uh, variables that we're getting we're pretty safe, but there are other, other things that you can pull down like the type of browser that they're using. Um, but you have to really be careful that they don't create a cross-site script on the log file that you will be viewing by changing the browser name to some malicious code. Um, so be aware of that. If you put it in something else, make sure that you disable any scripting when you're viewing the file. Um, so with that, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, um, feel free to visit hackya.com. There's a place for comments under each post. Um, or you can always email me at trenton, trenton at hackya.com. Thanks for watching.